All right, I'm just going to get this out of the way right now. For those of you out there, if any one of you decides to become a clown for whatever reason, please stay away from me. Just going to say that right now. Thank you. It is this year's second Stephen King adaptation after August's The Dark Tower, and this one is a horror film based off of one of his more popular horror novels, It. And in this film, basically we have Andy Muschietti directing, and we have these group of kids who form a group called The Losers, and because they're bullied in school all the time, so and they're called losers constantly, so... They become known as the Losers, and they start to notice some things disappearing, mainly children that are disappearing, and they think that there's an evil presence. And then you have Bill Skarsgård, who plays Pennywise, the dancing clown, and basically from there, the kids find this, they, the kids have visions of this clown and some other things. And then we have our horror movie, which a lot of people seem to be calling horror movie of the year. Alright, so let's get into it. Now, I'm going to be honest, going into this movie, I really didn't have too many expectations. I wasn't really looking forward to this movie all that much. I've never read the book, so I don't really know anything about that. But I have seen the miniseries, the It miniseries, which I think came out in the 1990s. The one with Tim Curry, who played Pennywise. And really, other than Tim Curry, I did not like the miniseries at all. I'd probably give it, like, D, D minus, maybe even. I, I really did not like that miniseries at all. So, yeah, when I heard that they were making a movie that would be a remake of the miniseries, essentially, I wasn't really that excited for it. And plus, I have a huge hatred for clowns. I think there's only one person that I know that hates clowns more than I do. And he refuses to see this movie for that reason. And it's easy to see why. Because the clown in this movie is one of the better parts, I think. But yeah, Go, coming out of this movie, it was, I mean, it did have some good moments. First off, I'll, I'll talk about the clown first. Bill Skarsgård, I thought, I thought was alright. I mean, I don't think he's as good as Tim Curry was, but he was... All right, well, I'll talk. I'll talk a little bit more about him in the flossom section. But for now, I do. I do think he did. He did have some scary moments here and there, and I do think that some of some of the scenes involving him were the more terrifying scenes. I do wish he was in the movie a little bit more, though. But yeah, really, what brings this mo what what or the most memorable part of this movie for me, at least, is the kids. At least after the 45 minute mark or so. Once you get into the second act, that's where the character development of the kids starts to come into play. And I thought their chemistry was really good together. They work really well together. They have some great moments. It's They have some very heartfelt moments between them. And overall, it was just a fun group to watch. The, the best character for sure is Billy, the main guy. He's the best character. I also really like Beverly's character, the the girl, the one that looks kind of like Molly Ringwald, in a sense, from Pretty in Pink. But, yeah, I thought she was good. I thought uh, Ben, the character Ben, I really liked him in the movie. And Richie, like, about halfway through the movie is when I really start to like Richie. And I thought Eddie was good for the most part. Mike, I really liked the character Mike in the movie. So yeah, that's just some of the characters. I really like the kids in this movie a lot. In the second and third acts of this movie. And like I said, there are some heartfelt moments. I also thought the direction by Andy Muschietti was really good. Because he makes it look like the 1980s. The movie's set in the 1980s. And I think he does a good job with the production design of making the movie look like the 1980s. I thought the cinematography was really well done. There were some good Dutch angles in there. I thought the musical score was really good for the most part. And the editing at times is decent, I guess. 
But yeah, overall, I do think Andy Muschietti did a fine job directing this movie. Alright, now here's where people start coming at me with their pitchforks and torches and an angry mob and start attacking me because I'm going to just say it right now. The more I thought about this movie after seeing it, the more I dislike it. And here's why. First off, the movie's not really all that scary, to be honest. It's creepy, but it's not scary. Like, if you know what I mean. Like, there's some, there's some creepy imagery in there, but it's just not really all that terrifying. Like, if you want something truly terrifying, go watch The Conjuring movies. Go watch Get Out. Go watch The Cabin in the Woods. It's movies like that that really bring home the tension and all the great scares and amp up the fun factor a lot. This movie really wasn't that fun, to be honest. And... Yeah, let's let's talk about Bill Skarsgård a little bit more. First off, he's not even in the movie that much until like the third act, and then he, then he's in the movie a lot. But yeah, up until then, he's in like he has like maybe five or six scenes throughout the entire thing, and so yeah, that that made his character kind of pointless, and especially toward the third act, he just becomes so over the top and so crazy. It's like yeah, I get it. He's Pennywise the dancing clown, but still like. There's, there's one scene in particular where I was, I was like, this is supposed to be a scare? And it ended up being unintentionally hilarious. I'm not going to spoil it, but it just came off to me as like this really, really cartoony in a way. And part of that was Bill Skarsgård's performance in that scene. I was just like, oh my god, this is supposed to be a scare? Okay. And, yeah, but... Yeah, let's really get into the meat of the Flossom section here. The first 40 minutes of this movie are unbearable. And I mean unbearable. It's your typical adolescent Stephen King school depiction, really. It's, it's that same old bored cliche where it like depicts schools... In a way that makes that it just makes looks it makes schools look bad. The Dark Tower did the same thing, and a lot of other movies have done it in the past. Fist Fight. That's a that's a perfect example. Fist Fight. Yeah, this movie does the same thing. Like it's your typical, like you have these kids who are not popular and they're bullied constantly. Which, by the way, oh ho, 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 the bullies. We'll get into that in a little bit. But yeah, the way they depict schools in this movie is just. Why does Hollywood keep doing that? I can't stand it. But yeah, and the character development was just piss poor in the first 40 minutes. Like, I couldn't stand any of the characters. Some of the dialogue was just awful. Like, it's your typical adolescent middle school humor. It's really what it is. Like, all these mother and sister jokes, especially that, especially Richie, he, he made these jokes constantly, and it was so annoying. Like, so annoying. I couldn't stand it. Like, just stop. And also, the first act is so slow. It's so slow. The movie's like 2 hours 15 minutes. It really doesn't need to be that long. Like, I agree. It shouldn't be like Dark Tower short, but it shouldn't be 2 hours 15 minutes long. Like, I, I would say around hour 45 would have been a good time for this movie. Like, it's it's a slow movie. It, it, but, yeah, like, the characters are unlikable, especially in the first 40 minutes. But the characters that are unlikable throughout the entire freaking movie that I couldn't stand, and I wanted all of them to die, the bullies, especially Henry. Oh, my God. He was the worst. He's one of the worst characters, not only of this entire movie, but of the entire year. Like, what bully does this stuff? Like, he does something to Ben. Like, the the chubbier kid, Ben, he does something to him. And I'm just like, where are the police? Where are the cops in this? And, like, where's everyone else? Come on. You can write better than that. Come on. Like, like you want to see bullies done right? Watch Stand By Me. Watch Sing Street. Movies like that that depict schools. I mean, I guess... I guess it's not really the best way to pick schools, but it's still really good. Much better than this movie did. 
But yeah, the bullies are unbearable in this movie. And, oh my god. One scene in particular, like I think around the 90 minute mark, I think it was. I don't remember exactly. Or actually, there's two scenes. Uh, one was around like the 65 minute mark or so, where the losers meet up with the bullies. And then it, it's like... And then they start this random rock battle. They start throwing rocks. So out of place. But the scene that almost made me walk out of the movie. I'm not going to spoil it. Let's just say it involves the main bully, Henry. A gun. And a small animal. That many people have as a pet in the U.S. That's all I'm going to say. And I'm just going to say, the bully was about to do something, and if he had actually gone through it, I would have stormed out of the theater so fast. Like, you would not see, you would not have seen me more angry than I would have been storming out of that theater if the bully had gone through with what he was about to do. That's all I'm, that's all I'm going to say. It, I was losing my mind. I really was. And, and yeah, and this movie's so cliche too, like, again, you have the whole school thing, and you have the whole thing with the kids, and like, one of the kids is a girl, and the girl has an abusive parent, or actually a couple of the kids have abusive parents in this movie, it's just, it's getting old, and, the old, and all the adolescent humor and all that, it's getting old, like, I loved this movie more when I saw it the first time. It was called Super 8. Why? Because Super 8 actually builds tension, has likable characters throughout the whole runtime, not just the last hour, hour and a half of the movie. And, like, you understand where everyone's coming from. Like, even, even the parents. And all the, character, and all the characters actually have a reason to be in that movie. So yeah, you understand the motivations, and they all make perfect sense. That's not present in this movie. It really isn't. Like, It, or Pennywise, whatever you want to call him, he doesn't really have much much of a legit reason to be terrorizing the town that these kids are living in. Like, he's just there feeding on, like, feeding on children, or killing children, or whatever. And by the way, the third act of this movie, like, there there were so many things that reminded me of Super 8 that I was just like, yeah, this is, this is basically Super 8 if it were a horror film, except it's not nearly as good. But yeah, I'm sorry to say it, guys, I really did not enjoy this movie. I really didn't. It's, and it's not my bias towards clowns. Like, it has nothing to do with my hatred of clowns. It really, it really doesn't. Like the real reason I don't like this movie is the bully. That's that's the main thing. I just want to make get that clear. It's not it's not the clown. I mean, even though he was over the top in parts, it's not the clown. So, so yeah. I mean, best horror film of the year. Yeah, get no no just no. Get out. Annabelle creation. Even a cure for wellness to some extent. Way better than this movie. While it does have its moments, it really does. Like I like the kids in like the second half of the movie, and there are some, there are a few terrifying moments. I thought Pennywise was scary, creepy as hell, for the most part, despite being over the top throughout throughout a lot of the movie's runtime. Overall, it is just not that good of a movie. I'm sorry. Like, I know a lot of people have this as their best horror film of the year. I could not disagree more. Again, Get Out, Cure for Wellness, Annabelle Creation, all are, all of those are much better. So, yeah, that's really all I have to say about it. It's one of the most overrated films of the year. It's not my number one because that's still It Comes at Night, but, yeah, it is one of the most overrated films of the year. It's just... Not that good of a movie, honestly. So yeah, I was originally going to give this a B, because I actually walked out of the theater thinking, okay, I enjoyed this. But the more I slept on it, and the more time I had to think about it, the more my grade went down for it. So yeah, overall, 
it is just not good enough for me to recommend it anybody I am going to give it a 42 percent rotten rating that is a C minus alright so there's my thoughts on the new Stephen King it movie hopefully the sequel is a lot better we already know this movie is going to get a sequel because it made a crap ton of money at the box office this weekend and it has like an 88% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh my god. <sighs> yeah. But yeah, hopefully the sequel is a lot better. So there's my review of It. Have you guys seen It? What did you think about it? Make sure to let me know down in the comments below what you thought of it. And what's your favorite horror film of the year so far? Mine is still Get Out. By a pretty long shot, actually. Get Out, I thought, was really well done. Really funny. Way better than anything in this movie. I'll tell you that. But yeah, make sure to let me know down in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe to the C.A. Cougar Movie Reviews channel. Hit the subscribe button down there below. And once again, the Network Awards. Make sure to vote for that. I'll put the link in the description of this video. Make sure to vote for C.A. Cougar Movie Reviews. Hell yeah. And anything is nominated in, I'm nominated for, I think, two categories. So yeah, make sure to leave your votes if you haven't voted already. And make sure to vote for C.A. Cougar Movie Reviews, your boy here. And I think my next review will probably be for Darren Aronofsky's Mother, which I'm going to be seeing this Thursday night, hopefully. But yeah, until the next review, once again, my name is the California Cougar. And always remember to stay California cool. Peace. Yeah.